So, hello. Hi. Lila here and Louis Gibson, the hello. 2022 Nebohorn Trophy champions. Yes. S yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how does this feel to have won? And uh, what do you think? You said it's your, your third competition yes. this season. And uh, yeah, so how did you keep you building so well? I think we're very driven in general as a team and we have big goals for ourselves and really believe in our potential and that if we work hard we can continue to improve and I think that fuels us in our training and we've had really quick turnarounds between all the competitions but sometimes having that concise amount of time is extra motivating so I think that's been a huge factor. Yeah and it's been it's been very rewarding as well um, to be still at the top of the podium each time also yeah. because that's something new for us yeah. this season and that's been very exciting. So from last season, it was a very big season, mm -hmm. Olympics, and you did well uh, in you. the last season. How much confidence did it give you and how much did it push you for this season? <laughs> oh, I mean, last season taught us so much. It was a roller coaster of a season with some high highs and low lows and I think we're so grateful for it overall and we have the confidence that we have at the start of the season as a result of everything that we went through and learned last year. So I think it's been very beneficial and something that we want to continue to build off of. What were the points? What did you learn especially? <laughs> Um, I mean, just even from our very first competition, we had to change two thirds of our free dance, and which the music. <laughs> was never something of a problem for us. We always picked programs and it went down super great. And then to have this sort of feedback was a big challenge at the beginning of the season. And so then, therefore, we missed competitions and that sort of pre-season buildup that we would normally have. Um, and then, of course, we had some kind of not great results at Grand Prix. We so, were inconsistent. Yeah, and it, so it really, what it forced us to do was really work on and address all of these problems that we were having rather than perhaps just sweeping, on, sweeping them under the rug and having a high energy program that sort of saved the day. But yeah. um, a lot of it we have taken on board and really pushed for during the off season this year in particular. And I think that it's really paid off mm -hmm. so far. But the Lion King was very popular. It was, but it, at the, you didn't see the beginning of the season. It was a totally different Lion King, and I'm really happy with the changes that were made. I think it was a better program overall, but you think you're prepared and you're on this time frame leading up to the season, and then when you have to restructure everything, it's a challenge, and I think it's something that I'm grateful for because we know that we can pull things together and work really quickly and, and effectively, uh, but it's been really great to have a really strong foundation already this season and to know where the program can grow to. So over the summer when you were training, when you were preparing, what was maybe new and different in your training? I think the, the base of our training is the same. We work really well together, we get along, and um, we know what works for us, so we've really stayed true to our formula in a sense. And then also just really going for it with the Latin dance style because that's something we wanted to get as good as we could at. Yeah. And we still have so much room to grow in, the, in that regard, but just to have an understanding of the technique has been something that I think has been reflected in our rhythm dance this season. Yeah, by the way, the rhythm dance is also very different this season because uh, we don't have the pattern yeah. part anymore. So how do you feel about these rule changes? I'm very happy. We love choreo steps, so we're <laughs> happy that what you could say was our least favorite element before has been replaced with our favorite element. Yeah. Um, but obviously, like pattern dances are great too and teach you so many technical yeah. basics. So yeah, and coming from single skating, I really only knew the pattern dances that we would learn every season. So I have not learned. Well, I, the I did the rumba before. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not adding to it if it continues this way. But you know what? I th I actually think it adds so much to the sport because it creates such a highlight in most people's programs. Mm -hmm. And personalization. Um, yeah, and it's much, um, you get a much better character of the theme and dance with a choreo step, I find, rather than a pattern dance. Yeah. So I think for the public and the overall sport, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah.
Yeah, and you also said that uh, you would like uh, if there are more, more choreo elements. Yeah. We love choreo elements. But doesn't it, that make it harder to judge and compare the couples? I think, yes, you could argue that, but it's also a great opportunity to be creative and to express your individuality in a sport where there's so many rules. When you can really just have a framework of rules, but then do whatever you want within that, I think it's really liberating and exciting and also forces the athletes to think about who they are and, and what they want to portray out on the ice. And I think if we're talking rhythm dance specifically with the new element, I think that it shows an, a better understanding of the dance style if you can execute it in something that's completely free. Um, and I think that that's something that is maybe more comparable than perhaps a pattern dance that everyone is just getting through. Um, I think it's going to show who's really listening to the music and the correct stylization and everything like that, I think it'll show up in the big competitions with everyone there. Yeah, your uh, Rhythm Dance was also already a big hit and the <laughs> crowd you. loved it. Thank and you. you got a huge personal best score at yeah. 85 points. You yeah. said your goal was to get like uh, 80. 80. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was quite far past that, which yeah. I was not expecting at all. So, so how did you choose uh, and build this uh, particular dance? I honestly, I'm not sure. I think we. <laughs> It's a whirlwind choosing yeah, music. Yeah, like you, especially when you have a genre to pick from, you just listen to so much until something lands, and I think that's what happened with the first piece. But yes, we love the Mark Anthony piece, and it's so celebratory and so well known. We love tracks that are well known so that the audience can get behind it. And then we found the rumba, which was a medley with J Lo and Mark Anthony, and then we're like, well, then we have to have J Lo have a solo yeah. as well. And we um, get a little bit of the Mark Anthony and J-Lo history in there as well as yeah, a couple. Yeah, the love story. And, yeah. and I, so. love, I love the middle song in particular. Yeah. And it feels really good to skate to as well. It's incredible what you can do within three minutes, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's lots of cuts, that's for sure. <laughs> no, I just, I mean, so uh, portray, tell a story. And yeah, and, yeah, and your free dance again was uh, really up your alley, this kind mm -hmm. of music and dance and to get the audience going. And uh, why did you pick uh, this? I think, you know, like Lila said earlier, it's really such... Lady Gaga has such a strong message with everything that she does, and mm -hmm. she's so convicted as a performer. And I think that we really want to show that on the ice, is the conviction and the passion that we have, not only for that music and that style of dance, but also for skating. Because we just love being out there and performing and when we went to her concert we could really feel her energy and her want to give the absolute best that she could mm -hmm. in that moment and we Dedication. really yeah like we really resonated with that and I hope that that's what shows when we perform our even program. a fraction of the amount would yeah. be so fulfilling for us because she's just such a master and the command that she has over the audience and the way that she brings so many different people together. That's something that we felt really um, honored to be a part of when we got to go to her concert. And of course, the Born This Way theme and message is just, like, it resonates with everyone. And it's also very dear to both of us mm. as well. So how do you feel about your growth as a team ever since you started? <laughs> I think when we look back, it's really cool to see where, where we've come from. Um, But also we just try to stay very present because we're so, we're not satisfied yet. I don't think we ever will be. We're both so motivated and always see what we can work on and get better at. So I think it's important to reflect upon our, our what we've achieved in the past just to build confidence and just, you know, give ourselves a pat on the back, but also stay yeah. present and keep doing the work. Yeah, like when you start from such a... It's not a disadvantaged position in the sport, but we came from two very different paths in the sport and thrown in there at senior and kind of just having to do it. And I think that that has really made us always feel like we're catching up yeah. and always having to work that bit harder maybe just to achieve things. And I think, as Lila said, it's nice to look back and to see the growth because it's, it's there, uh, but you don't always feel it in the day in and day out yeah. as well. It looked like you very quickly picked up the ice stands <laughs> stuff. <Yeah. no? laughs> I think you did. No, there's certain things I did and certain things I have not. <laughs> yeah, like But. we just don't put the things we can't do in the programs. That's yeah. the secret. <laughs> Good <smart>. packaging. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But then still, maybe next time it's still coming. Yeah, yeah there's exactly. so much to work on. Yeah. yeah. 
What is your goal for the season? Oh, I just, I'm really excited to see where both programs can grow and how they will evolve and maybe change and how we can enhance things and, and build the scores as a result. Um, and also just to continue to build our confidence and and our skills as performers because I think every competition is an amazing opportunity to learn how to perform under pressure and what we need to work on and connecting together under pressure and I think we just collect that that information wherever we go and it's something that we're excited to keep doing. Yeah. And I think too just performing in front of audiences again. Yeah, it's like so nice. here already has felt special yeah. and it kind of last season really only felt like worlds was a full house of people and oh and it, you could feel the difference yeah i'm really hoping for of course the home grand prix as well yes. and sheffield oh my gosh. and skate canada i'm sure will be a busy grand prix as well so i think that i'm very excited for that it's just it's so electrifying yeah to perform in front of people it's, yeah it's a great privilege what are your long-term goals <laughs> huh. um I, I would say, I mean, of course, we just want to keep moving up and up and up and see where we can get to. I think when we started, we never thought we would get to where we are right now. So yeah. we um, like to kind of shock not, ourselves, yeah, shock <laughs> ourselves, like not really set concrete, concrete goals, but just be open to the possibility when we give our all and show up as our best. Um, and I think also to just continue growing as ice dancers with different genres, different ways of moving, different elements, and just kind of pushing the limits as a team and hopefully within the sport as well. You are training in Montreal with yeah. many, many teams yeah. and uh, big coaching. So um, how, obviously, teams are benefiting from that because oh, yeah. the school is very strong. It's amazing. With your personal, how did, how did you get into this uh, I mean, since the beginning, basically, you, you train there, right? Yeah. yeah, so it's a funny story because I had a solo dance career back in the day <laughs> in Great Britain, and Roman somehow choreographed my programs. I don't know why he did it, because I was horrible, but he was very generous and kind. Um, so I've known him since I was maybe 10 years old. And when we started together, we were training between the UK and then we also wanted some of Roman's help too in the beginning because I think the second day of skating together, we went to Montreal because we felt like we wanted his impact from the beginning um, and his amazing eye as well, combined with the amazing coaching team in the UK. So we were back and forth for a year because I was in high school in London still. And then eventually we moved to Montreal and they were generous enough to accept us into the school. And it's just been such a such a privilege and an honor i feel like we're so lucky to get to skate there and to learn from the best every day and to be surrounded by such wonderful people who are so different and bring so much to the sport and we all admire one another and are inspired by one another and i just i wouldn't want to be anywhere else great britain has a tradition in ice dance of course everybody knows jane Torvald, christopher d who okay <laughs> You thought I was serious. <laughs> <laughs> I know them very well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, lady, later there were also Penny Coombs and Nicole Nick Buckland Buckland doing yeah. also. It's a tradition. So, uh, what do you, it's your dream to continue this tradition? And also, how do you maybe uh, think you can help to British ice dance? Ooh, good yeah, question. I think um, I think for us we have already started to have our own unique flavor in the world of ice dance and kind of what we bring in our performances and our selection of music and different things like that and I hope that that will get shown in the UK more and more and hopefully kind of reinvigorate the UK's love for skating again because it's there, it's still there. Everyone knows Torval and Dean in the UK when you ask them. And they love dancing on ice, the TV show, mm -hmm. so why can't... that's can why he started skating, so yeah. it's, it's really all there. So why can't they love skating in general and just the regular competition? So I really hope that if we can continue to push up in the world of skating, that the UK will be invested again and hopefully love the sport that we love. And even after the Olympics, we had a few messages of young people who went along to their rink because they watched us skate and they heard Lewis's story in particular because he started at 11 years old. So it's like, it's never too late mm -hmm. and you just have to give it a go and it speaks for itself because it's a feeling that you can't help but fall in love with and that for us was so gratifying and I yeah. think we just love the sport and are such advocates for it. So if we can encourage 
more British people to get involved, that would just be the best. And it's great to have the Grand Prix. Yeah. Exactly, I think that would be really great too. Now, uh, for the end, I just have a kind of a little fun question. Okay. Fun question. Uh, so, can you, Lila, can you please describe Louis in three words? Oh, that's so difficult. Okay. Thoughtful, creative, and sincere. And a fourth word, sassy, but in a good way. <laughs> and so now it's your turn to describe Lila. Okay. Um. Wise, caring, and loving. Oh, his face. <laughs> and sassy. <laughs> and sassy in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> so, Louise, Lila is sent to an isolated island. Oh, and no. she can take three things. What does she take? Her journal. Yes. <laughs> a pen. Just Peppermint kidding. tea bags. Oh, yeah. And the journal comes with a pen. Okay, it's attached, yeah. yeah. And mm, dark chocolate. Mm. And what does Louis take? So he's bringing a battery, okay, a pack of batteries so that he can <laughs> charge his LED lights <laughs> that he's going to tie over all the trees so that there's a beautiful ambiance that changes color. He's very into lighting. Yeah. Um, so that was two things. And then I think you need a little snack. So yeah. he loves Terry's chocolate oranges. Um, and I actually have orange chocolate to give him as a well done <laughs> after this as well. So we'll be well fed and well entertained. That sounds good. And um, now then, there's one more question I wanted to ask. And it's okay. <laughs> oh yeah, the um, you had a YouTube channel, right? A podcast. Podcast. I've always yeah. wanted a YouTube channel. Haven't done that though. Ah oh, okay. So can you talk a little bit about the podcast? Yeah, so I love talking to people and I love hearing their stories and also I believe in the power of role models and how, like watching Dancing on Ice, Lewis saw Torvald and Dean and was inspired to start skating and that totally changed his life. So my hope is by interviewing people on my show and sharing their stories, I'll encourage my listeners to pursue what they're passionate about and transform their lives as a result. Sounds great. And and you have um, like, a, um, you do like run skating classes. Yes, yes, yeah. I love to I love to host seminars, especially in Scotland, because it's, you know, like to bring um, some world class athletes or coaches to help where I started is uh, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I can continue to do that and grow it on a bigger scale one day. He's so good at organizing them, too, and he does it all by himself. And it's very impressive. <laughs> Yeah, I saw you uh, uh, on the website. You have a website. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. logo and the yeah. sweatshirts, everything. <laughs> I got a free sweatshirt. I was really excited. <laughs> cool. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck for the entire season. Thank Still you. We'll see you again, for yes. sure. Very soon. <laughs> very soon. Thank you.